Hello, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, my name is Emmanuel. Welcome to the Kevin's channel. In today's video, we, we will continue with buttons. Before we take a step into the make sure you smash the like button, click the subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. Let it ring. Now, let's get into the video. Welcome back, guys. Oh my goodness. So, we just create a new file over right there. So, we're going to talk about buttons, the pie. Okay. And when it comes to buttons, it's usually it's it, they are usually interact interacted interact what I can't even pronounce it interacted with okay that's the word they can be little and much at the same time to explain but we'll be discussing the relevance much and little in this video by the way there are some similarities with the label widget and the button widget like the text um this text the text variable if you don't know what that is don't worry about that the image and the compound and if you didn't watch my last video don't worry we're still going to talk about this in this video anyway and first of all let's create the button and sh you see how it works oh my goodness okay see what this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna skip this part where i'm just gonna sit set up the root window okay now i'll create the button we're just gonna do ttk dot button. Let's let let's not store it in a variable for now. If we need to we'll do that, ttk dot button. Then we inherit from root. We want it to be in our root. And okay. Oh, you know what? Okay. I was thinking of putting a code in here, so you know we just build things together like that. But let's just do it separately. When you get geometry management, we start building things together. So roots, and then we just pack a text variable to it. As I said, there are some similarities. Similarities. So we say hello. Or uh, let's just use cl click me. Now, of course, you need to use a geometry manager to make that show. So, if I do control B, as you can see, you see click me. That's how I create a button. Now, I don't know, I didn't know this at first. It's funny, I didn't know it, but you can create the button without text. I was expecting the button would just be like very thin, but as you can see, it's six spacious. It's six space within. Okay, you can do that in case you don't know. Just wanted to show you that. And you can also display an image in a button instead of text. So let me show you how I did that. Similar to what we did in this place. So we're gonna do tk dot. We're gonna create a photo image object. Okay, we need to start in a variable. Btn. I'm gonna call it a Btn image. Of course, you want to choose better variable names when you're building your own programs. So photo image and now name of the image. So let's just use the same what's the png we lose using our label widget photo image okay we get that and now how do you show it you just have to come here and do image and then pass in btn image so if i run that now you see we have an image showing in our button so this stuff this this is a button <sighs> nevertheless we can also display both text and button on both text and image on, this, on the same button so we're going to do that right now just put text or oh, you have to put the text attributes hello there if i run that we won't see the text okay but it's there so all we have to do is just use the compound we do the compound and then this pro this uh, positions your image relative to the text so if you say compound right your image will be at the right of the text if i do right and i do control b sorry yeah your image will be at the right of the text i'm right if i do left uh, yeah, and if I do center, we have it there at the center, right there. Hello there. Oh, it even works well. The design. <laughs> anyway, we move now. Let's discuss how to make button interactive. Of course, that's why we have buttons. The command attributes is what does it. It enables us to attach a callback function to our button when it is clicked. That is, enables us to call the function when our button is is called or clicked. Let me show you how that works. Just like every other. Um, arguments you pass in here, so you do command and then you pass in the other whatever function you want to call whenever your button is click. So I'm gonna come here and create a function really quick. So we're gonna call the function. Let me use this hello, and then what we do whenever a button is clicked is we're gonna print, we're gonna print hello there, okay, and I'm gonna run that. Yeah, of course, I don't know, I always. Yeah, I'll keep forgetting commands here. Anyway, oh my goodness, sorry about that, guys. So sorry, I thought I typed it in already. Okay, command hello. We're gonna do control B, and I, whenever I click it, you should see the hello world printing down here. Okay, you can see it right here. Hello there. 
I want to cancel that and let's let just make it a little bit more so now if you know about you know you know this is obvious system you can create this and if you want to call to function at the same time like as someone asked me in my first video i believe you can all you can all you can do is just put in a function here that houses two function and then just call your other two functions in here and pass whatever parameters you need to pass in there okay now what about using lambda function of course we can use that as well so we just do lambda I will just do what we we'll do is root dot quit. Okay, so what we want to do is whenever we click on it, we are using a lambda expression here. And if you guys don't understand what this is, this is just an anonymous function. It's just a function you create without having to do this. So, if you want me to talk about that, maybe in another series where I'll talk about more um, intermediate Python series. I talk about lambda and some other map stuff like that. Um, filter. You can comment in the comment section below. Also, I'll consider it as my next. One of my next playlist so if i run this control b now whatever this we do is no this is root the reference is root so what we are doing is we're gonna quit this window if i click on it as you can see it quits the window so we can create our own cancel button somewhere else if you don't want this so if you want another type of sort of button so i can click this and it works okay that's cool now there's also something even cooler the evoke function so what we can do something else we can always evoke our function Whenever something else happens, so I'm gonna create another button. Let's get a button. Now I'm gonna put this in a variable and call this btn one. Now I do let get a button. I'm gonna let's change it from root the command. It's gonna be let's just I'll come I'll come to command in a minute. Let's put a text there. Call it secondary button anyway. And now this command is gonna be btn one dot invoke i was going to explain it before but I, I think it's better it's better i do this way so this is good whenever you see a button that invoke it's going to invoke the function that is attached to the button now if i run this come on i can't keep doing this keep forgetting commas oh yeah remember i explained this in the last video whenever i put whenever i put a widget in a variable and you want to access it or use it somewhere else later in your program you don't want to always call your geometry manager on it okay so we'll come here and do btn one dot grid or else your the grid will return a non-type to this variable and that's why we're just going to be trying to waste our time on over here so i'll do control b now if i come here i believe my button guys i think this uh, this mistakes are a good a good one so you guys know what are necessary what is necessary for you to do when you're writing your code and i love the way this is going so we're going to do control b so we have a button here now whenever i click this button it's going to invoke the function attached to this button so if i do this i'm btn one dot invoke oh, sorry not that that is supposed to do that okay so this is btn one dot invoke if i do that control b oh yeah of course sorry about that now it won't work this way it's because we're passing it as an argument oh we're just gonna use a lambda or oh, one thing we can do is just call the hello and put this in the yellow but i don't want to do that i'm gonna i'm just gonna put in a lambda and then we'll do this with one dot lambda so if i run this now oh my goodness so many mistakes now you see it works so that works don't think it doesn't work okay now just you call your lambda function what you can do is do the same thing and just cut this control x and call your hello paste this in here oh no i didn't mean to run it control v so if i run this if i click this it runs the function so you can put multiple functions in here okay that's it for that you know what the invoke 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 works now let's move to button state button states depending on operations the button can be set to either disabled or normal Odd seemed widget that is i'm talking about ttk widget or carry something we call an internal state which are just binary flags don't need to worry about not something big can but I'm, i just want, i'm just saying not something big because it's not something we need, we need to worry about so is this is, is this same binary flags or this same states we're using to modify the state of our buttons the binary flags we're using to modify state of our buttons so when i'm talking about this example binary flags are just disabled for example if your button is disabled depending on operations you need to perform as mentioned earlier it can you can change your binary flag to make it disabled we can also have the press so all, all widgets all have this all widgets have this binary flags okay one or the one or two or the other they all pertain to different widgets now let me show you what that is so for, for button what we can do here is just do btn1 
dot and now the binary flag you can how do you change the state so we're going to do states i'm going to talk about a bunch of other of some here so now state how do you disable your button and then we come here it must be in curly braces must create a sort of list here okay and then you type disabled and that automatically disables your button ladies and gentlemen you see this is no more uh, no good but this still performs the same operation whoa it doesn't perform the same operation okay so something you know you know how that works now so whenever this button is disabled you can't call it function as you can see we can't call it function okay now if i do this this is the same thing as default just that just means not disabled okay now we know how to disable and not disable so how do we check the state of our buttons let's say we want to check if our button is uh, dis disabled so we're going to print and then we're going to say btm1 dot in states i believe that is, that is the word in states here and then we put disabled so i want to check if our button is disabled now this is going to return in that true or false depending on it so this this here means not disabled so don't disable it okay you get that so in this case if i do that which means we will get to that let's just first do this let's do this first so which one the, in states want to check if this is disabled of course our button is not disabled so it should return false down here so as you can see we have false down here and if i put this which means not disabled so is our button not disabled yeah it's not disabled so it's going to give us a true down there okay so we have that okay now so what of if you want to call a function whenever our button is disabled let's just come here I have to append you something real quick oh my goodness okay we're gonna come in now when the let's say you want to call hello whenever a button is disabled so i'm gonna do print print and then we're gonna let's put um hello so if i run this now you see it prints hello because our button is disabled as you can see that it's print hello so that's one instance of the in state whenever a button is disabled from this called hello well, well this we can be some kind of business to it even though it's not that real, real time anyway thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed it then you should give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on my next epic content not love guys peace out